publicly traded securities side of the world is is a bit new to most uh, cryptocurrency enthusiasts, and especially uh, blockchain technologies and also ICOs, because obviously it's a alternative to it. But a major vehicle that uh, companies use to go public is the reverse merger. And for many of you, you know what I'm talking about, but the, the short and dirty explanation is there are myriads of these publicly traded vehicles that are defunct, looking to be defunct, listless ships, you name it, uh, minimal operations, no operations, and what, they, what they're good for is these reverse mergers, whereby a existing company takes control and puts in their assets or otherwise merges their private company with the public company, the net effect being that now the private company has has gone, become public, and it's basically a, a backdoor IPO. It's been characterized as that. So the question becomes, is it really valuable for a, a, a cryptocurrency-based company to to consider the, the reverse merger route? Um, and we could talk about the IPO route at a different time, but sort of the quick and dirty going public route of, of reverse mergers. And there's some pitfalls with rever, rever, reverse mergers. One, you have to consider the fact that when you do take over a, a, a public company, you take with it its history, right? So in many cases, the and there's some unscrupulous people involved in it, but in many cases, the public shell companies have liabilities. They may have lawsuits. They may have tax liabilities. They may have unpaid notes, whatever the case may be. And you can inherit that by when you take control or when you merge in your assets and the assets of the private company that are now that of the public company could be in peril. Um, so you have that. You also have obviously increased regulation. It's a publicly traded company. You are you have shareholders that you have to answer to. You have the SEC that you have to answer to. You have OTC markets or NASDAQ that you have to answer to. So there's increased regulation. Uh, there's enhanced rules, especially related to things like insider trading, um, selling shares uh, as a as an insider, an officer, director, or a large shareholder. There's significant restrictions on that under what's called Rule 144. And, and overall, there's just a, a general a general scheme of regulation that's been there for a long time that isn't there with with cryptocurrency and ICOs right now. So the question becomes, does it really make any sense to to follow that path? And in the past, from my perspective as an attorney, I've only um, I've always said going public only makes sense if there's money involved in it. If that's the means with which you need to go to raise the money you need to run your business or grow your business, then it makes sense. If you could get that money in a private environment, stay private. There's no need to do it. There's no need to subject yourself to the increased regulation. There's no need to subject yourself to the increased costs in terms of reporting, in terms of, of audits, in terms of, of fees paid to OTC markets, to your, to your attorneys, to whomever. It's really not worth it. It's worth it if you have no other option and really the, the, the the catch, the draw to going public, especially in the reverse merger world, has always been liquidity, right? You can offer your shareholders liquidity. You can offer them common stock in an investment that that after either immediately or after a six-month holding period under Rule 144, they could liquidate. So unlike a like a crowdfunding model, which we see now, a lot of these people are, are who invested four or five years ago are upset. They're, they're pissed off, quite frankly, because there's no exit, right? Unless these companies get bought out or, you know, Google buys them or they pay a dividend, which they have no legal obligation to do and they have to make money first to do it, there's no real, there's no payoff, there's no liquidity, there's no out for you. So going public and especially in the reverse, the reverse merge route gives your, invest, your investors that flexibility. So if that's what's going to get the deal done, then do it. That's what I've always said. Go do it because if that's what you need to do to get the money, then you have to do what you need to do to get the money you need to grow your business. But we're in this ICO world where you see Ethereum Cash, as you see these them raising $30 million at a time for real projects, and the liquidity is there. The liquidity is there in the sense that you've got this secondary market with exchanges, which, you know, they're largely unregulated. There's all sorts of problems, and of course, like, you know, today is. Kraken's been down all day, which is a problem. That's, that's a huge problem that needs to be solved in the crypto world. But there is this liquidity, right? There's a liquidity, and if you have a utility token, you have a duality of it. Not only do you, do you, you know, contemptually have a secondary market, but you also have some use for your token, right? That token could be useful in some capacity or the other. 
And so when I look at it, you know, do you need to do a, a secondary a, an offering through reverse merger as a public company? I don't think so, not in this environment. And you see the SEC has stepped in and suspended a number of, of publicly traded companies, especially in the microcap space, that said, hey, you know, we're in blockchain now. And then they went up, you know, $3,000 the next day, and most of it was nonsense. It was all BS. So, you know, the question becomes, if you had one or the other, the ICO or the reverse merger, and you could raise money doing either, right now you'd definitely say the ICO. And if, if you could, you know, if you didn't know, right, again, if you didn't know what you could raise, and again, you had the option of reverse merger and ICO, right now I'd have to say ICO. Until that window closes, until that regulation comes and makes it as difficult to raise capital as it is as a publicly traded company, whether it be through reverse merger or ICO, there's just no reason not to, right? Follow, follow. you know, it's like a hot pitcher, right? You just ride him until it, till it, uh, till he breaks down. So I, I think that, um, you know, the reverse merger route, you know, maybe with some odd blockchain applica applications that don't lend themselves to ICOs or if the ICO is a true security token and it's going to create liquidity issues, there's really not, not a great value in, in pursuing the, the reverse merger because it's just it's fraught with risk and expense that in the ICO world you don't necessarily have to have to have and you can create the same amount of liquidity or even better even better there's nothing to say that just because you become publicly traded you cr you have liquidity it just means that you have the potential to have liquidity and you have to you have to consider the applications and what you have to do to create that liquidity and create eyeballs on your stock so you know, in all, reverse merger, I don't think it's it's quite the most sensible decision, but, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, it may be. So, if you have questions, check me out, at at tracyfirm.com, bitcoin-lawyer.org. Talk to you.